welcome you to another broadcast in this new year. I want to thank God for your life. I'm glad that you made it into the new year, 2022. It's a year loaded with blessings, mercies, and graces. And I know that God is about to do new things in your life. Um, I'm glad and I'm excited that this year will be a year, the year we have long waited for, for exploit, for dominion, for victory, and for testimonies. If you're joining us uh, the, for, for the first time, I want to welcome you this new year. I want to thank God for your life. If you're a frequent uh, 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 listener to uh, and, and uh, audience to uh, this broadcast, I want to say that a big thank you and a very happy new year to you. On this life's journey series, I believe God that together we will reach our utmost and fulfill all of our potentials in Jesus mighty name. It's a, an amazing new year. And I know that all of the plans and dreams and purposes that you have will come to fruition by the power and the grace of God. I want to thank you very sincerely for your contributions and your commitment. And I believe God that this year will be the year that you have long waited for, for transformation to that new height that God has ordained for you to be. Uh, this year, we're going to start with a new team. Uh, this is our year of attainment. So the year 2022 is our year of attainment. And this month is our month of empowerment. And this message is coming to you as a New Year's, as a new year's message uh, to kickstart the year. Uh, it's not a message per se, it's a, it's a little nudge to nudge us into what is in uh, store for us for the uh, remainder of this year. So we're kicking off this New Year message to wish everyone well and to put everybody in the frame, in the mind, in the, in the frame of mind, in anticipation for what God will do. And I believe God that your life will never be the same. Before we go on to today's message, as our custom is, let us put God ahead of us so that He will make the crooked places straight and He will perfect all uh, that concerns us. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your magnanimity. We thank you for your kindness and your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the unleashing of your goodness in our lives. We thank you, Father, for this new year, 2022. You have brought us into this glorious year to beautify, your, to beautify us, to, to decorate us, and to catapult us to greater heights. We thank you, Lord, that in spite of all of the calamitousness of last year, you have thought it good and merciful and kind to let us see the beginning of another glorious year. What, a, what an amazing testimony that we're alive today, hale and hearty. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. And Lord, we commit this broadcast to your hand that as many will be hearing, whether by podcast or by uh, whatever platform it is that they have the opportunity to listen to this message, that it will bring forth nourishment, nurturing and empowerment in their pursuit for their ultimate goals in life. Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name and we honor your precious name and your precious son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' blessed name, we have prayed. So today our topic is liberation for exploit. Our topic again is liberation for exploit. Remember, this is our year of attainment and this is our month of empowerment. And we're looking at all the various aspects uh, that God has put in place to empower us for success, for attainment, for victory, in order for us to attain dominion. And, and one of the key concepts of attainment and success and pursuit in life is liberation. What is liberation? I remember the scripture in John chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth or believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And when I remember that scripture, it tells us that God has given us the opportunity to have dominion by setting us free by giving us dominion via liberation. He liberated us to have dominion. And when I think of that scripture, I think of the children of Israel. 
we were in captivity for 430 years and at the time at the till at the at the verge of their entering into their promised land they entered their minds began to deter them from what god has ordained for them they were liberated quite all right like many christians are liberated because christ has set them free however their mind becomes the limitation for their exploit jesus christ liberated us for us to have dominion for us to do exploit and the Bible says in Daniel uh, chapter 3, it says, They that do know their God, sorry, chapter 12, they that do know their God shall, shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Now, the beginning of our exploit starts with new birth. So Christ liberated us in order for us to have dominion. But unfortunately, not many people are enjoying dominion. And when you relate that to the story of the Israelites, when God took them out of captivity, out of slavery, out of subservience, we then discovered that at the verge of entering to the promised land, they came, their mind failed them. The most important factor of their life at the verge of their success worked against them. God gave us the liberation and the empowerment via his son, Jesus Christ. However, our mind must be liberated in order for us to enjoy the dominion that God has ordained for us. So the children of Israel in, in Numbers chapter 13, all the way from verse 10 down, all to the end of it, he talked about the children of Israel. They got to the point where God told them to go take the land and enter into Canaan and possess it. However, at the verge of it, their mind began to flounder. They began to doubt. They began to doubt the capacity of God. They began to doubt the ability of God. And then it ended up in their destruction in the wilderness. The people who would have enjoyed a thoroughfare into a land of promise, a land that flowed with milk and honey, a land of splendor and honor and dignity, a land where everything was already prepared. They could not enter in, not because they were not liberated, but their mind couldn't set them free. You know, it is often said that you can set a man free physically uh, and he could still be in prison in his mind. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, say, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. What does that mean? It means that it is our mind that brings the transformation of our lives. So we could be born again, we could be liberated from the kingdom of darkness and still not be free. Because if you set a man free physically and his mind has not been set free, that man is still not free. That man is still in captivity. And so the children of Israel, uh, Moses said to them to spy the land, they came back and then this was the report they gave. They said, we truly have searched the land in Numbers 13, verse 27. And it was truly a land flowing with milk and honey. They said, however, there are giants in the land. They said, we saw the children of Anak uh, in the land of the south. We saw the Etites and the Jebusites and the Amorites uh, in the mountains. We saw the Canaanites in, in the, in, by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And then they said, and the conclusion in their minds was this. He said, we be not able. Now, George, the Bible says that Caleb had a different spirit. He had another spirit. Caleb understood where their minds of captivity was bringing them to. That they were free. They saw all the glory of God. They saw the power of God. They saw all the amazing strength that God expended and dispended in their liberation. And yet, when it was the when at the point of their victory and breakthrough, they became captives in their minds. You know, until our mind set us free, we're still in captivity. And they got there and they said, we be not able. And Joshua Caleb said, no, we, we let us go at once and, and possess the land. For these men are bread for us. Let us go and we're able to take the land. I believe God that as long as our minds are not in captivity it doesn't matter what your body what freedom you think you have until the mind is free the body cannot unleash its potential it is because as long as a man is in captivity in his mind he cannot be free in his body his mind con 
controls his body and his mind is the determinant of his success in life. His mind determines how far he travels in life. His mind determines how far he goes in life. His mind determines what he accomplishes in life. You know, it was uh, uh, it was uh, Henry Ford who said, if you can, if you think you can or can't, you're, tr- you're right. If you think you can or can't, you're right. It doesn't have to do, has nothing to do whether you're born again or not. It has to do with the capacity and the ability that you have entertained in your mind and that is propelling you towards your liberation in life. So Christ has set us free. And he says in, in, in John chapter Chapter 8, verse 32, he said, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. But first, you've got to be free in your mind. You know, in America, there was a survey that says that a, a, a prisoners who are let who are set free are likely to relapse. It's called recidivism. It is a state where a prisoner who is set free is expected to come back. Why? Because though he has been freed physically, his mind is still in captivity. He still has a mindset that he is not worthy of society and that, you know, oftentimes they say they know that they would always end up back where they came from. Why? It is because the mind has not been set free. It is because the mind is still in captivity. Though the body is free, but the mind is still in chains. The mind is still wandering in life as a, as a slave. You know, if you go back to the history of the slave trade in, in America, when the slaves were set free, many of them didn't know they were free. And indeed, when they knew that they were free, many didn't understand what they could do with their lives because all their lives, their mind had been in chains. Their mind had been dependent on their masters. And so when it came time for their liberation and liberty and dominion and for them to go out and explore and have dominion and take charge and rule and subdue and replenish they couldn't because their mind told them that they can't you know Henry Ford is right if you think you can or can't you're right your mind is is the determinant of your success your mind is the determinant of your victory the Bible says in second Corinthians chapter chapter 10 verse 3 he said though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal for they are mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds and amazingly what was the first step what's the first stronghold that we need to pull down he said he said casting down imaginations so our minds our imaginations hold us into in captivity from doing exploit our minds holds us and restrains us from breaking forth our minds tells us it's impossible and then we accept it and then we become failures but the day that we realize that we have all of the capacity and all of the potential just like the children of israel didn't understand what they had even though they saw it but their minds were not free the bible says in numbers 14 verse 1 he says and the people Uh, And the congregation of Israel lifted up their voice and wept. Why? Because they thought that they couldn't. And they said, and the people cried and murmured against God and against Moses and Pharaoh, and and, sorry, and Moses and Aaron, and said, why have you brought us out of the land of Egypt? And they said, would to God that we had died in the land of captivity. Can you imagine that? How can you comprehend these people who have been told to go, you know, from the slavery and the oppression and the captivity and the subservience and the beggarly life. They've been told to go and, and become all that they can become, to be free, to have dominion. And yet they said, we wish to go back to Egypt. We wish to die in Egypt. And they said, oh, that we die in this land. We don't want to go face the giants. I tell you, my friends. You cannot succeed unless you're willing to face the giants. You got to be like David. David was willing and ready to fight in order for him to possess. And his mind, his mind was not in chains. His mind was not subservient. His mind was not in captivity. His mind was free because he that has set him free has made him free indeed. And his mind has been let loose to believe that he can. You know, the first thing he says, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? that defies the army of God. Our minds are responsible for our dominion. Our minds are responsible for our success. And it all depends on 
how you have allowed your mind to encapsulate your future. What do you see with your mind? What do you see? You see dominion, you see failure, you see lack, you see, you see truncation of destiny, because it is what you see that you will get. And the Bible says, and down further down in, in Numbers 14, verse 8, Joshua said, if it delights the Lord, he will give us this land. And I believe God, and I want to pray with you that this year it is God's delight to give you the year 2022. He said, if the Lord's delight in us, he will give us this land, and we shall possess this land that is flowing with milk and honey. He said, Well, don't you rebel against the Lord? I pray that in the year 2022, wherever God is leading you, that your mind will not make you rebel against God. That whatever charge God has given you to possess your possession, that your mind will not limit you to achieving it. He said, we will, don't rebel against the Lord and fear not this man. I pray that every spirit of fear that has held you bound and held you captive, God will set you free as you unleash your mind to becoming all that God has ordained you to become. He says, for God has, he says, for their security has departed from them, verse 9. And God is with us. Can you imagine that? God is with us. Therefore, will not we fear, though the mountains, though the earth be, be removed and the mountains be cast into the midst of the sea, we will not fear. Why? Because the God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord of hosts is our strength. I want you to have this mind, the mind of Christ. The Bible said, let this mind be in you. It was a mind of dominion. It was a mind that knew no captivity. It was a mind that was free. And because his mind was free, his body was free. Because his mind was free, his body could accomplish. You know, your mind can only, your body can only go as far as your mind will take it. The Bible says, I lay before you life and death and choose life. And the only way to choose life is to use your mind to choose life by moving away from death. You say, choose life. So even God couldn't do anything if your mind was still in captivity. God said, you have a choice to make. And that choice is yours. And you can either choose life or choose death. He says, choose life. In Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19, he says, choose life that you may live, you and your family. And I believe God that this year, and the Bible says, continuing in Numbers 14, he said, and as Joshua told them, all of the blessedness that contain, that is contained in the ability to ex- understand that God has already given us the victory, and all that we need to do is to use our mind in accepting that victory. He said, as they speak to them, he said, they took stone and they were going to stone Joshua. But the Bible says, the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 10 of Numbers 14. You know, I know that this year, as you take steps to achieving your glorious height, as you take steps to going into your promised land, as you take steps to going into that place and and into that venture and business and, and desires and pursuits that God has ordained for you this year in 2022, I believe, God, that the glory of the Lord will descend and appear unto you and bring you to your wealthy place. But first, your mind must be willing to accept it. Your mind must be willing to take charge of it. You must have in your mind that it is possible. You know, that was the first thing David said. David said, it's impossible to bring down this giant. And because he had a possibility mindset, he was able to conquer Goliath. You know, everybody ran away. Why? Because they couldn't fathom in their minds that Goliath was conquerable. They couldn't fathom in their minds that Goliath was defeatable. They couldn't fathom in their mind that Goliath was a foregone conclusion. Why? He wasn't depending on his strength. He had established his mind to the point where he knew that God was with him, that the God of Jacob is our refuge, that the God of Israel is our strength. He said, though be mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, will not we fear, for the God of Jacob is our strength, the God of Israel is our refuge. I pray God and I believe God that in this new year, as you make up your mind and open your mind to the possibility that, that that anything is possible with God, and that's the starting point that will save you from the captivity of Egypt into the promised land in 2020. 
to. Let me end by a quotation by Godwin Godwin Woodman. Amazing. He says that if you can control what a man is thinking, you don't have to worry about his action. If you shall determine what a man should think, you don't have to concern yourself about what he will do. If you can make a man feel inferior, you don't have to compel him to seek an inferior status. He will seek it himself. If you can make a man feel unjustly an outcast, you don't have to tell him to take the back door. He will go without being told. And if there is no back door, his very nature will demand it. One, you see that? That your mind is the determinant of your success. That if your mind sets you free, you are free indeed. Christ has done all that is needed to do for our victory, for our dominion, for our success. However, you need your mind to be loosed. You need your mind to be free. You need your mind, you need your mind to conform with the word of God. The Bible says, be not, be not, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. When your mind is renewed by the word of God, when your mind is renewed according to the word of God, when your mind is renewed in accordance to the will of God, what you have is dominion. What you have is that God has prepared for you in 2022 a year that is flowing with milk and honey. It is left for you to possess it. It is left for you to take it. He says, casting down imaginations that tells you you can't. Casting down opinions that say you can't. Casting down suggestions that tells you you are not worthy, you are not qualified. He tells you that you are not the type. Casting down those imaginations and bringing them into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean? Bringing them into captivity to what Christ has already done, which is he has liberated us. He has set us free. He has given us dominion and empowerment. He said whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He says bringing those knowledge and uh, those imaginations, those aspirations, those, those, su those suggestions, uh, 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 you know, uh, bad suggestions and bringing them into the, to the obedience of Christ. That is, you're subjecting your mind to the superior mind of Christ. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. They say, who, who knows the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? For we have the mind of Christ. Second Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. We have the mind of Christ. It's a mind of dominion is a mind of empowerment, is a mind of victory. I like to, I believe God that as you, as you forge your head in this year, as you plan with your mind, unleashing the potentials within and saying to yourself that you are well able, that you can overcome, that you will take the land, that it doesn't matter the giants there, it doesn't matter how big they are, it doesn't matter how world the cities are, that you can take it. That is the first step to success. The ability to know that you are born to succeed. I'd like to thank God for your life. And I believe God that this year is your year of testimony. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you your own inheritance among them that are sanctified. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord cause his face to shine towards you. Keep believing, keep standing strong and keep holding faith. And until I see you on Sunday where we'll gather again and, and explore you know, the, the, the concepts that God has given us uh, for this year, I believe, I want to pray, believe God that you stay strong and healthy and keep believing. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Bye.